You know, so it's it's interesting because today's live stream is going to be about living with more freedom than a CEO on the budget of an assistant manager. And I really do uh, know firsthand that that's possible. And I think this photograph uh, really demonstrates that pretty well. And it's funny, this was actually two years ago uh, for the 4th of July weekend. Uh, me and all these uh, wonderful people here were out camping in Oregon. And so my buddy David with the blue bus there, he happened to have an American flag. And so we hung it up and took this photo. And uh, I was like, that's a perfect photo for the, for the live today because we're talking about freedom. Right. And, uh, and we're talking about doing it on a budget. And so I think the great thing, you know, about van life is before I really dove into van life itself, I was already kind of fed up with, um, you know, just the system and the way that, um, you know, you're constantly having to work and make more money and pay bills. And, you know, oftentimes you're having to spend money that like you really don't you don't want to have to pay for certain things, but you're required uh, to have them to like, you know, be a part of the part of the game. So, like, for example, I owned a house. I had to pay mortgage insurance, you know, and uh, right. there's just all these there's all these just little things uh, that they get you. And you have to pay, of course, for your power and your water and your trash and your Internet and um you know, this was a pretty modest house. And I remember by the time I had all my just regular expenses, my mortgage, all my bills paid, you know, I was spending a couple thousand dollars a month, um, you know, more than that, even probably 22 or $2,300 a month, if you include my cars and car insurance, um, you know, just to get it like a baseline, you know, and that right. didn't include me actually doing anything. That was just me to like maintain everything and keep everything moving along. Yep. And, and yep. so I was like, there's got to be a better way. And that was really, that's something I love about van life is, and I'm going to break it down here in one of these slides, kind of go over a little bit of a budget and just share with you guys how it really is possible to live an amazing life, have way more freedom than I ever had. You know, when I owned a house and owned a business, um, I was always tied down. You know, I couldn't just take off like for this 4th of July weekend, I couldn't just take off and go camping. Uh, I definitely would have been working for the 4th of July weekend. So, um, you know, I think van life is a great solution for people that are ready, ready for more freedom. What do you think, Justin? Yeah, you know, um, we've talked about this before, but it's it's funny. I worked for Target for three years and I started with 10 bucks and I ended in debt. And so, um, you know, it's like, what happened to those three years? I didn't really progress much financially. And so, you know, um, the job I have now selling books, I don't make as much as I had at Target or uh, at doing security work for a hospital. Um, my paycheck cut like in half, but because my cost of living is reduced to like 10% of what it was, I'm still saving way more money. And I get to go on cool adventures, meet interesting people like you. And um, there's always a really awesome story just around the corner. And, you know, I think you and I can both agree on this where it's like, we both uh, are kind of spontaneous in a sense where it's like we have options available where we kind of make rough plans, but they're not rigid plans. And so when you get into a lease with like a, a an apartment or you take a mortgage, it's like you're committed to that for 30, at least a year to 30 years. And so, um, you know, we're so such an uh, we're in such like a blessed state where it's like, well, OK. Um, if I wanted to spend a week in Mexico, I can just pick up and go to Mexico anytime I want. And um, yeah. another another really cool part is whenever I visit friends or family, <clears throat> you can bring the party with you, so to speak. So um, I'll give you an example. We're making breakfast this morning and there's like, oh, we need eggs. And it's like, oh, I have like two dozen eggs in my car. So let me just go get my car, uh, my eggs real quick and bring them in. And it's like, you know, think about in any other situation, that'd be ludicrous, right? You're just like, I can't go home and grab my eggs from my car. <laughs> I totally so. agree with that, man. I, I love it. It's it's definitely an, an additional comfort factor to, um, it's definitely an additional comfort factor to have everything that you need with you at any given time. You know, right. so you don't, you don't need to, uh, you don't have to worry about running home to grab anything. And I love what you said about how you started Target with 10 bucks and you left Target in debt uh, because it's right. so true. It seems like a lot of times the expenses that we that we accrue along our lifetime, you know, it's it's just a they're expenses that seem necessary and they kind of fall into place as you get a job and you 
you know, you get an apartment and then you have to furnish the apartment, you know, and you got to get the couch and then you get the new car and, and it all just kind of adds up. And before you know it, it seems, it feels like you're just working to pay the bills. So today we're going to talk about how you can not work to pay the bills and how you can uh, work a little bit and have a lot of freedom. So I'm going to, let me switch slides here really quick. Oh, I guess that's not going to work. Okay. We're <laughs> I don't know what's technical going on. issues. What are those? <laughs> yeah, right. Just growing. So um, I want to kind of just give you guys a little bit of an overview of what you could expect um, from today's live stream. We're going to talk about minimalism, the minimalism mindset, and then also van life freebies. And so, you know, the idea with the minimalism mindset is you're adjusting your, your thinking habits, your spending habits, and the goal is that you're spending less and by spending less, you actually have more. And this is, um, I love this, this little phrase that Justin came up with. He, um, he says, every dollar that I spend leaves me with less freedom. And so I love that idea. I never really yep. thought about that until he said it. Could you tell us a little bit, Justin, what do you mean by that? <clears throat> so I kind of realized like the most important investments in my life were always investments that reduce the cost of living in the future. And, um, so, uh, you know, it's like, I, I consider us to be debt slaves, um, just by the nature of the monetary system that we have. Um, you know, we've got student loans, mortgages, um, just general debt for um, credit cards. Um, and they don't teach you how to manage any of this stuff properly in school. So I realized pretty quickly that um, a lot of the monetary system in our in the US is set up to be debt based so that you continue working for, you know, for the, your whole life, theoretically. And so, um, you know, my goal in life has been to break free of that trap. And I don't have any debt currently. I have um, a lease on my vehicle, which I pay $375 a month for. But, um, you know, compared to the roughly $1,000 a month that I was spending uh, for rent, um, you know, 370 is a drop in the bucket. And um, I get a nice vehicle out of it. So that's a big plus. And then after it pays off, you know, the lease is only three years, and then it'll pay off. And, um, then I won't have that 375 a month anymore either. So three years sounded a lot better than a uh, 30 year mortgage. And so uh, when I make an investments, I always try to think about the future, right? So <clears throat> a couple of examples are, you know, figuring out a way to, uh... <laughs> sorry, I saw you <laughs> twice. <laughs> yeah, I saw you twice and it freaked me out, but um you know, future investments that reduce the cost of living in the future. So uh, having your own washer and dryer, um, anything that can make you more independent uh, out of the financial system, having your own vacuum, your own tools that you don't need to rent, um, a big plus in my book. And there, that's there's nothing better than that. And then once you get your cost of living down to, you know, 10% of what it was before, then you can kind of start working on building your financial situation up. And so that's kind of where I find myself where it's like, okay, I'm making 1400 a month now selling books on Amazon. My cost of living is 375 plus, you know, expenses here and there, food, probably about 200 K, uh, phone bill, another hundred or so. So, you know, I'm probably spending about 600 bucks a month. Um, but, but the cap for my, um, profits can, is that ceiling is way high. So, um, you know, I'm always kind of looking forward to the future and graphing, and calculating what my expenses will be in the future and, um, you know, the, and making, making it exciting, you know, that's a big part of it too, is giving yourself something to look forward to. I like it, man. I agree with that. I feel like, uh, you know, the whole part of van life really for me is the excitement and, um, and that's why I'm out here doing it. You know, that's one of the trade-offs for living in a van, right. Is having a lot of exciting times. Um, so a couple other things we're going to talk about is going along with the idea of Justin's mindset. Every dollar that I spend leaves me with less freedom. The other thing we want to talk about is how many resources can I acquire without spending dollars? And so that goes into, you know, the more stuff you can get for free, the less money you have to spend. And then also where can we find those resources? Right. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then we're going to talk about budgeting. So I'm going to kind of share with you guys 
what my fixed monthly expenses look like. And then that just can kind of give you an idea of, you know, things to think about, you know, what your version of that would be. And then also um, what are some potential unexpected expenses that you can be prepared for? Now, I know when they're unexpected, it's hard to be prepared, but um, it's something to think about. And then maybe some dollar, um, there's some dollars associated with that that you might want to kind of just save, um, save and set aside in case something comes up. So we will go ahead and get started. Give me one second here. And one thing I remember, I've talked, I've worked closely with a lot of police officers. And uh, one thing they always mention to me is like, there are so many uh, free resources out there um, for homeless or for anybody who wants to take advantage of them. And um, they say that pretty much nobody ever does. And um, so that's always kind of something that I've always been on the back of my mind is that like, we live in a society where it's like, we just throw food away in bun abundantly. And um, it's kind of crazy, but it's like the resources out there, you just have to find them essentially. That's a totally true statement. Um, that reminded me of a couple other things that I'll talk about, but there is so much waste that goes on out there that, you know, if we can, if we can step in and help capture some of that before it becomes waste, then we're not only helping ourselves by living for free, free, but we're also kind of helping the environment, you know, it's that all that energy that turned into the, you know, maybe a food product, we're consuming that and it's not just getting thrown out. So I think it's a great idea. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we have here is kind of the minimalist mindset. And so again, you know, from a young age, we're raised to be consumers and it's something you don't give much thought to. Um, but you hear about it on TV, you hear about uh, consumer reports, right? It's in the name of the, in the name of the magazine, you're the consumer. And th so there's a report for you to read and decide what you want to consume. Um, you know, there's consumer credit unions. Uh, the name is out there. So we have been raised to be consumers. And so the great thing about being in a van or being on the road, you know, in a small space is that once you have your, your vehicle, and you have everything set up, you know, you have your clothes, you have your cooking items. It's a pretty good feeling that you're just content. You have the items that you need and you don't, you, it's easier to, it's easy to get away from that consumerism. You know, you're not thinking about, man, you know, I really could use a new coat or man, I really like this new set of bowls that I see at the store because you realize when you go back home to your vehicle, you probably have nowhere to put it anyway. So right. in a way, living small, it kind of trains you to think about living with less and it, it kind of shifts you out of that consumer um, mindset. It reminds me of those like Target ads where it's like every week they've got a new brand. Um, I worked very closely with the apparel team at our store and it's literally it's like every other week there's a new brand, something else for you to buy. Um, just mindless consumerism and they, and they glorify it too, with the, uh, ads on TV. Um, everybody's all happy and smiling and they've got their new sweaters and stuff. And it's like, well, the, <laughs> the clothes at uh, Goodwill, um, they probably look better and are cheaper. Um, and, uh, you know, you're helping out, uh, a good cause uh, in theory. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. And, um, you know, I used to go shopping quite a bit. I was raised by my mom. And so like, she would just go shopping like on the weekends. That's what we did. I mean, you remember the nineties, right? You go to the mall, you get a smoothie, yeah. you go shopping for jeans. I mean, it's like, what do we do? We just go spend money and buy stuff, right? Let's go I hang out at Target. That. Yeah, I grew up <laughs> with that mentality. And so, um, but once I moved into a van, I, I had limited space. So I kind of picked out all my clothing items with intention. Right. And so I have, I made That's a, a little good list, feeling. list here, but I have like four pairs of pants, four pairs of shorts, six t-shirts. And so once you kind of have those items secured, you don't need anything else. And I know occasionally I'll spend some time with someone that lives it still like in a sticks and bricks house. And they'll mention they're going to the store and I'll end up at the mall or, you know, at Nordstrom or whatever. And I'm looking at stuff and it's like, I don't need anything. I have everything right. I need. And so it totally just shifts your mindset. And so knowing you have everything you need and then not having to spend money on clothes, it just kind of breaks that cycle. 
Right. It reminds me of this really funny video I saw earlier is about like an extreme minimalist. It was about a bicyclist who did um, trips around the US. And um, it's like when you're on a bicycle, you can really only carry like a small tent and like two pairs of clothes. And it's it's really interesting. I highly recommend watching some of those videos because it really puts in perspective like what's important in life and what's not. And, um, you know, I, I have a friend in Hollywood and she's probably got about 27 pairs of shoes, a uh, wardrobe full of about a hundred different, uh, dresses and whatnot. And it's, yeah. it's interesting. It's, I love talking to her because our lifestyles are one eighties. <laughs> yeah. The contrast is very interesting. Um, and so one thing for me right now, I'm staying in, I'm parked at my dad's house in Arizona. And so I'm kind of, I'm in their house a little bit doing some cooking and a big, point of uh, a big thing for me with with minimalism is the cooking aspect of it. So for me, mm. I cook everything in an instant pot um, because the instant pot uses electricity, which I collect for free from my solar panels. And um, and so that's my only cooking device. I have like one bowl that I mix stuff in and then I have like two, like two bowls personal that I can eat out of and two forks. And, um, and I make everything work with that. You know, I have right. tricks and tips for making different items and, and it's all contained in those, those few appliances. And then when I'm done, I have a few things to clean and that's it. And, uh, and so I contrast that with going into my dad's house and they're <laughs> Get and lost in the uh, utensils. There's, yeah. There's pots and pans and like cheese slicers. And, uh, you know, by the time we're done cooking, and keep in mind, you know, they're cooking things that I can cook. It's not like they're cooking things I can't cook. We're making the same right. type of stuff, but they just like the amount of utensils and like specific items that are like laid out at the end of the night. I have to spend a half an hour, you know, doing dishes just to clean up the mess. And even right. just last night, I was like washing all these plates. And in my mind, I was like, God, I just miss being in my van. You know, I just, I rinse out my one bowl and I turn it upside down and that's it. It's game over. Hey, Walt's here. Hey, Walt's back. So yeah, so I, I love it. It's uh, it's definitely it's a good time. The minimalist mindset, um, it helps free you. It frees you from the oppression of uh, kitchen utensils. <laughs> Yeah. And there's so many awesome tools today. Like we live in such an, uh, an amazing time where it's like you, like I've got my pressure cooker, but it's a 12 in one tool. And so they've got multi-tools now where it's like, I can bake, I can fry, I can, um, saute, I can do all these things with just one, uh, utility and, um, it doesn't take a lot of space. And, um, my dual induction burner is, uh, definitely helps me a lot in the kitchen as well. So, there's nothing I haven't Absolutely. been able to make off any recipe that I've been able to find. So. Yep. I really like your induction cooktop. I think that's a great tip for anybody doing mobile living. Um, if you have a solar system do, using an induction cooktop, you can create anything that needs a traditional burner and you're using electricity off uh, the you collecting from the sun for free. So I I've never had one personally, but I'm definitely going to be um, acquiring one soon, probably in my next home. Um, so yeah, I think induction cooktop is a great idea. And so let's, let's uh, hop over to the next slide. And so here's some pictures of Justin. This is Justin. Uh, <laughs> I don't know you his, took those photos. <laughs> out of his BMW. I, I took that photo. That was at a park in Austin. And, uh, so he was setting up, he's got his induction cooktop out and he's got his cast iron skillet and he's uh, cooking up some eggs. And so I think this is really cool because I didn't realize you could use cast iron with induction. I thought you had to use aluminum. Um, so I'm happy to see that you can use cast iron. I like cooking with cast iron. I think it's a healthy choice. But, right. Um, yeah. That was a big, talk about this. Go ahead, Justin. That was a big part for me was I didn't want to start cooking with aluminum because there's a lot of research going out there that it's linked to Alzheimer's. Right. So I wanted to try to like the two things that I have are, is that cast iron uh, skillet? And then I have a a uh, four gallon stainless steel pot that I use for cooking water or uh, even doing laundry. Um, very useful to have, but I made sure that those are just the raw uh, materials and it's not lined with aluminum either. Um, and that's kind of a big part of, uh, was a high priority for me was like, if you're going to do the van life, it's really easy to slip into situations where you just start eating fast food all the time. And yeah. I really wanted to still take care of my body um, while I'm on the road and not, you know, um, one thing that I've learned is that 
the restrictions actually uh, breeds creativity. And so you can, when you have a limited tool set, you have to get real creative. And it's funny, I don't even own that blender in that photo anymore. Um, Brad <laughs> showed me this nifty tool that's basically like a handheld, um, almost like a handheld blender. And I went and bought one off Amazon and had it shipped to me while I was in Texas. I didn't even need a PO box or anything. They've just got the, um, I think you order online through Amazon can just be shipped to a warehouse nearby. And I picked it up and um, it takes way less space than that blender does and does uh, just about the same um, work. And then I just yeah, have mason called, jars. It's called an immersion blender. Yeah. And it's basically yeah. like a wand, but the great, the great thing about it, the reason I don't use a blender is it takes so much effort to clean it. Right. Like when you're limited on water and you're like, you know, you're trying to clean out this huge blender, but the immersion blender, you can blend directly into a mason jar or basically whatever container you're going to store the, the, the food in, you just do it right in the container. There's no mess. Yeah. I use that a lot for grinding my coffee beans, actually. Um, I just have oh, a mason jar, fresh, throw the beans awesome. in there. I like it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's well, I mean, again, it goes back to like saving money. Right. And so I realized I was spending $3 a, a day on coffee at McDonald's when I can just make it for, you know, less than a dollar a day uh, by myself. And I know what's going in it. I know there's not a lot of sugar uh, yeah. or creamer or anything like that. So. Yeah. And if, I mean, if you're grounding your own beans, that's as fresh as it gets, man. I mean, I've, I haven't gone that far. I like it. Yep. And I use my own distilled water. So it's like, um, it's the real deal. You know, it's, it's better than anything you can get on the market and um, you know, what's going in it. And that's a big part for me. So. I, I agree. And I think, um, you know, for me, the biggest takeaway that I've had from minimalist cooking, trying to save money is the key is really creating your own meals. And then when you create right. your own meals, like you mentioned, you can control what ingredients are going into them. And so it's, it's so easy to eat healthy when every meal you're making, because then you look at the recipe and it's like canola oil, uh, <laughs> a cup of sugar, you know, you're like, wait a minute. But when you just <laughs> yeah. go to a restaurant and order an entree, you have no idea what's inside there. Yep. So yep. It, it gives it you- It tastes so good though. <laughs> it does taste so good, but it gives you the opportunity to really be intentional um, about right. what type of food you're putting into your body. And I really believe that, you know, you can live with better quality food for less money um, by doing it that way and creating your own food. Yeah, there's a- uh quote that I have here, no man is free who cannot control himself. And that's, I think that was uh, Dostoevsky, but, um, you know, okay. philosopher. Yeah, right. It all starts with the self, with control of self, right? That's self-control. You got to control right. yourself first. And, uh, and then you can start to try to control the external things, but it all starts with, uh, with yourself. And then I feel like more specifically, it probably starts with the mind. So that's, that's the, that's the tricky devil. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with this idea of like, well, where is home? You know, if we're a van lifer, where is home? And um, that's a very interesting statement. Um, Jordan Peterson had a speech a while back, and he said that home was whatever gets you from point A to point B. And I always kept me in the back of my mind because it's like, well, where do I want to be in five years uh, financially? And, um, you know, if I'm paying rent at a place that I hate with people that I hate because my roommates, right. you know, would leave uh, plates and uh, silverware everywhere. It'd be dirty. Um, there'd be a cat litter box that would be full and they wouldn't take care of any of that. And so I would have to do extra work on top of spending five or $900 a month and rent and utilities. Whereas now I spend less than that. I have the, like the world is my home now, essentially. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just a matter of perspective and mindset can um, get you a long way in this kind of lifestyle. I really like that. Um, that point, you know, home, home really is a feeling. And so for example, when I went to this big uh, van life event, Schoolie Palooza a couple of weeks ago down here in Arizona, as soon as I pulled off the road, off the highway onto this gravel road, and I saw all the vans and the buses camped out, I felt like I was That's home. home. Yeah. You know? <laughs> this was a location that I had never been to before, but location was irrelevant, right? Home was the feeling, the people, um, right. you know, the sense of familiarity. And so you can experience that while you travel all over the country. So it's, it's kind of nice that, you know, you can change home can be anywhere and, uh, and it can be exciting at the same time.
I often catch myself slipping and saying Texas is my home, even though it's like, you know, I've never, I've never owned property over there. Um, I just yeah. really liked it. I have so many fond memories of Texas. And so I'll, I'll be talking to my mom and be like, oh yeah, back home. And it's like, yeah, wait, you know, what does home mean? It, it's so funny when you think, cause you know, we use that word all the time, but have we really thought about it very much? Um, right. Absolutely, man. I, I like it. Home, uh, home can be wherever you want it to be. Let's, um, let's jump over to the exciting part, the more exciting part, van life freebies. So one of the great things about this lifestyle is that there's a lot of things that you have to pay for when you live in a traditional sticks and bricks that you do not have to pay for when you're living the mobile lifestyle. And so I went ahead and listed a few of those things out. And um, Justin as well has stumbled upon kind of his own versions of these as well. But um, the, the, the three main things, I guess, the three main expenses you have when you rent an apartment or own a house, you know, is your rent and your utilities. And under utilities, you have water and electricity. But when you're living this lifestyle, um, I don't pay for any of those things. So yep. just going down the list, water is, you can get it free many different places. Uh, most city parks, state parks, they'll all have water, uh, water spigots. And so I carry a hose with me and I believe Justin does as well. Yep. And so you can drive up to a water spigot and attach a hose and whatever water uh, system you have, you can fill it up for free. Uh, besides parks, uh, gas stations and mechanic shops almost always have water spigots outside that you're welcome to use. Um, they, they do it especially for automotive style businesses because back in the day when cars were less reliable, they would overheat right. often. And so people <clears throat> would look for gas stations or mechanic shops where they could fill up their radiator and cool their car down. Um, I believe so it's actually law in California for gas stations to provide free water um, yeah. for that specific scenario. Absolutely. It could be. In fact, I noticed when I was driving to San Diego a couple of weeks ago from Arizona, as you go up over the pass, they have what they have, uh, radiator water checkpoints. It's this really right. steep mountain pass and they have these big signs and it says, uh, radiator water fill and they have them like every half mile. So, um, right. I'm glad we're not driving vehicles from 30 years ago because they sound horribly unreliable. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, that, that's, that sounds unreliable and like, uh, you know, <laughs> your day ruined and probably right. your week. And, um, and so then, so water, you can get it a lot of places. I, I would mention, make sure to filter your water. Um, you know, unless you're somebody that just drinks tap, tap water without a care, then that's, that's up to you. Um, but so I have an inline water filter that I carry with me. And so it connects to the faucet. And then my hose connects to the back of the inline filter. And if you check on Amazon, you can check for um, like RV hose filter and you'll find all kinds of different options, but it's a pretty simple, affordable option to just filter uh, whatever city water you're getting. So make sure you filter it, but you'll want a water filter and a hose, and then you're prepared to top up with all kinds of free water. Um, um, I want also want to... That? Yeah, so I've, I've actually... Um... I've slept in church parking lots before, um, never been an issue, but the next day I woke up and there was a couple of missionaries that were wanted to speak to me. And, um, you know, I had no problem speaking to them. They were really nice. And, sure. uh, but I asked if I could, uh, fill up my water jug in the church and they're like, yeah, please, you know, come, you know, uh, water has an association with uh, Jesus. So, I mean, that, uh, sounds like that was really Jesus interesting. Would do. All yeah, exactly. He Jesus, he would have definitely offered you some water. Right, right. I mean, so, you might have even offered to turn it into wine, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool party trick. Um, but then um, I also got a dehumidifier recently, and it doesn't produce enough water for me to uh, drink um, as a primary source of water, but it's definitely a nice supplement. I get probably um, like half a mason jar full of water every day living in Seattle area, just due to okay. humidity here. And so, um, you know, it all adds up. If I have a five gallon tank, I mean, that's going to add every day. I'm getting half a mason jar full of water um, for free, essentially. Um, it just extends the life of uh, your water supply. So that's really nice. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Um, one other thing I'm just now thinking about, <clears throat> I've never personally done it. But I know quite a few people that 
collect water from uh, rivers and streams. And so they make these really, um, really advanced water filter kits. And it's like a three stage water filter. Yeah. And so I know a guy specifically that has a little water pump. It's a 12 volt water pump and he just dips it into a stream and it pumps the water through the filter and just down a hose into whatever bucket. So <clears throat> that's yeah. even another option too, is, you know, if you're doing stuff, not in the city, if you're out at like, you know, out on free camping or out by a body of water somewhere, you can also just collect water from whatever sources around you. Just make yeah. sure you're always trying to filter it. Um, especially if yeah. it's just a, you know, a natural source, make sure to clean it. So. Um, I've distilled river water before and, um, it was totally fine and clean and ready <laughs> to drink, but, uh, it, it was salmon week back home and, uh, the water tasted like salmon. So, um, you know, just be prepared for that. <laughs> That's something to keep in mind. Know your source. If you're, if right. you're, if you're collecting stream water during salmon week, your water might taste <laughs> like salmon. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then let's move on to free electricity. Um, this is great because me and Justin have two different perspectives on this. I capture my electricity for free from the sun, just based on, you know, my current setup. I have solar panels on the roof and the solar panels charge my batteries and I can use that power to run basically everything in my vehicle. I don't have any propane in here. Um, I use it for cooking with the instant pot. I want to get an induction cooktop Um you can run a toaster oven, a tea kettle. I have a, a blender that I use in here, a little bullet blender, uh, my refrigerator, your lighting fans. So basically everything that you would use in a normal house, um, even my laptop and my iPhone, they all charge from the sun. So I don't have an electricity awesome. bill. I am limited to how much I can collect and capture. You know, if I go, if I go more than a couple of days without, you know, direct sunlight, then I start to run low and and it can be an issue, but, um, as long as I'm in the sun and since I'm a van lifer and I'm able to travel and follow the good weather, I'm pretty much always in the sun, you know, maybe an afternoon or a day at worst of clouds. But other than that, I'm back up and charging again. And so I get free electricity and that lowers my monthly living, um, monthly expenses. So tell me Justin about how you get your electricity. Yeah. So back when I lived, I lived in a little sedan for a long time. And um, my primary source of electricity was just running an inverter that goes into your plugs into your cigarette lighter. And that's uh, powers off your, um, I forgot the car part is called, but um, basically when your car is running, the engine's uh, producing electricity and um, you know, you harness that from your cigarette lighter. And so you can get about uh, 200 Watts of power from that. Uh, to charge a car, uh, to charge a battery, or um, if you hook it up straight to your car battery, you can get about 300 watts that you can take straight from your car battery. Um, I'd, I'd be cautious with that because you don't want to have to jump start your car if you're going to charge anything off your car battery. But um, it's definitely something that I used in the past. <clears throat> but now I drive an electric car, and I charge. Um, I charge at night on free charging in the cities. So most cities these days are trying to convert them into smart cities. And what that means is that there's infrastructure for, um, oh yeah, he took photos of them, but that's perfect. So um, in the city, that adapter on the left there, that's used, you can plug it up. Um, if you just download the charge point app, um, that adapter will let you connect to the charge point adapter. It costs about a hundred bucks, but it gives you two outlets. And those things, that's about um, 3000 Watts of power coming from each of those AC outlets. So it's a, it's a crap load of power that you get from these charge stations. Cause if you think about it, electric cars require a lot of power to charge them. So um, you get a harness all that and you can use all that for free. And that little inverter on the right is what I was talking about with the cigarette lighter, just charging it. If you have like um, just in your own, a normal car. You can get about uh, 300 watts of power if you connect it to the car battery. So um, I highly recommend using those two options to uh, uh, harness the electricity. And then, you know, you're going to want a nice battery, you know, invest, uh, I'd say invest heavily into a really nice battery rather than cheaping, uh, cutting corners on the battery. So nice. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I, I definitely think it's good to, um, you know, it's good to have a high quality battery. Um one other thing I was, I was just thinking of as we, um, 
One other thing I was just thinking of as we talk about freebies uh, is trash. So, you know, oftentimes, oftentimes when you're in a home, you have to pay for trash. Uh, when you live in a van, you don't have a garbage service. There's no little garbage man that comes to your, to your van and picks up the trash. So what I, what I've been doing is I use, when I go grocery shopping, I get the plastic bags at the grocery store. I know they're not available in some areas, um, but where I'm usually at, they're available. So I get the small plastic trash bags, or uh, plastic grocery bags, and then I use those for trash. And then once I fill one up, I just go ahead and toss it out at, um, at the next place I'm at. So once you start looking, you'll realize there's trash cans all over the place. So yeah. a, a gas station is a great spot, for example. Um, whenever I go to a gas station, I always go through my van, whatever trash I have, I throw it in the bin. Um, but otherwise, you know, outside of any store, grocery store, city parks, there's trash cans everywhere. But I have right. found that if you use those small grocery store sized plastic trash bags, those fit in almost any trash can. And right. then the other benefit is you're getting the bags for free when you buy your groceries. So you're not spending money to buy trash bags that you're then just going to throw away. Isn't that crazy? You pay money for trash bags. You're just right. you're literally throwing money in the trash. Yeah. So I think yeah. uh, the grocery store trash bags with the free gas station trash, I think it's a good hack. What do you got, Justin? I just want to add, I wouldn't, uh, don't be like an asshole about it. Don't throw like a week supply of trash into a small trash container. Um, if you have to throw a lot of trash away, I find just going to a park uh, is really useful because they usually have big trash containers there. It's up open to the public and, um, you know, just dispose of it uh, there. Um, any, any public park should have uh, dumpsters for the site. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely key. I think with van life in general, you always want to try to like tread lightly. Right. You know, you don't want to make a scene. The idea is there's a lot of people living van life and we want to kind of just slide under the radar and you want to make sure you're leaving resources for other people and, and making it nice for the next person. So that goes along with not filling up one trash can with a bunch of trash. Um, you know, don't be, don't be messy. Don't be spilling stuff all over the ground. Try to just clean up after yourself and be a good citizen, right? That's, it's too bad that you have to even say it, but I think it's very important that, um, people consider that. And then I think I, I think what I, what happened is I went ahead and jumped slides early by accident, but we can just go ahead and circle back. Um, this yep. is still kind of under the idea of freebies. And so not only, not only is there the idea of what freebies um, resources can I get, like food, water, like water, electricity, rent, um, and then also trash, but then there's actual physical free goods that you can receive. And Justin has been very, very good about um, finding freebies online. So, um, and Justin, maybe you want to talk a little bit about uh, the free section and yep. uh, diving for free items. I remember really quick, I remember there was a holiday. I don't remember which one, but you brought, you brought a bunch of free stuff. Tell us about it. Okay, yeah, this is a little embarrassing, but um, you know, I, 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 I believe in recycling pretty heavily. And um, I, I used to live in an apartment complex. And when I was a kid, you know, I was probably like nine or 10 years old. I remember dumpster diving and people like people were throwing away new condition stuff like paper that are still in their bindings and they're throwing them in the trash. And I'm like, well, what's going on here? And so, um, you know, as an adult, I'm like, okay, well, wouldn't it be fun if I went dumpster diving again? So um, I went to uh, Krispy Kreme and I look in the trash can and there's, they literally bag up all the uh, Krispy Kreme donuts in a giant trash bag. And uh, I just dug them out and I took them to Thanksgiving dinner. Nobody ate them. Uh, the dog <laughs> did actually, the dog got it, <laughs> the, uh, the Krispy Kreme donuts and oh man, she went ham. But uh, and it was really funny. Everybody was laughing. But uh, I think that petrified my grandma, which was uh, even more funny. Um, I kind of did that because it would uh, cause a reaction. But did you, um, did you try it though? Did you at least try one of your oh, donuts? Yeah. Oh hell yeah! Oh, yeah, they were good. It wasn't bad, right? No, they're they're they were there from the previous day. You know, they throw them out at the end of the night, and so yeah. you know they'd only been sitting there for probably like five hours in a trash bag. So it was all good. Um, 
not like my proudest moment, obviously Krispy Kreme, you don't want a diet of Krispy Kreme donuts, but right. um, I thought it would be funny just to do as a, uh, as a gag pretty much. But um, <clears throat> you know, my mom was really into this Facebook market uh, marketplace and she would often uh, come to me and she's like, look at, I got three things of coffee grounds for you for free from the marketplace. And so it's kind of one of those systems where you check the, your market uh, locally on Facebook um, and, you know, check your city that you're currently staying in. And, uh, you know, they'll ask you a couple of questions like what's your street address or something like that or close, close streets nearby. You can obviously just look up on Google maps, but um, you know, she's gotten me quite a bit of free stuff just from the marketplace. But, you know, part of that, um, you know, they ask you like, why do you want this product? Um, and so, you know, you'll, you'll say a reason, but, you know, you kind of want to give back to the community too. And so <clears throat> one thing that's really nice about living this lifestyle is we're talking about earlier is the minimal as minimalist aspect of it. So you don't have a whole lot of extra stuff that you, uh, uh, a lot of extra space, excuse me, to store a lot of stuff. So just getting rid of your stuff is like one of the most joyous experiences I've ever had. And, you know, I've, I cut my possessions down from like 90% of what I had um, to 10% now. And um, that's been a, a huge blessing. I, I love, you know, really looking uh, under a microscope, every single item and its utility and uh, choosing what's important. And if it's not important, just giving it away. So, you know, <clears throat> You kind of want to keep the system going. You don't want to be too greedy with these kinds of uh, luxuries that uh, are available to you. So, yeah, I agree. And, you know, even for me living in a vehicle, having limited space, I still, you know, go through and purge items. You know, every yep. every few months, I feel like I, I end up going through completely cleaning out the rig, sorting through all the stuff. And then, you know, the items that I haven't used in a while or items that I just don't use often or just don't really like, I just get rid of them. And I'm amazed at how many things I end up, you know, collecting and squirreling away in the cubbies inside my van. And so, you know, no matter what, there's always op opportunities to give back, donate, pass stuff on. And uh, just, you know, it's all a cycle, right? So just keep, right. keep the energy flowing and give a little back and take a little. And, and so I think that's great advice. And one uh, thing I would say is, um, if it's actually important and you do get rid of it, well, you have extra income now to buy it again. So I've done that uh, before too, where I've gotten rid of a distiller and then I've been like, oh, I actually want the distiller again. So, you know, you get to save away, um, save a lot of extra money doing this kind of lifestyle. So just go buy it again. It's not a big deal. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, you know, what's, what's the cost of holding on to something versus letting it go? And so when you're living this lifestyle, we're going to talk about monthly budget and monthly expenses here um, in a minute, possibly on the next slide. It's, you know, it's, it costs you so little that, you know, you can replace stuff, you can buy stuff again. And one thing I wanted to mention, one of my favorite parts of the minimalist lifestyle is I like to have nice things. So, you know, just because you're having few things, fewer things, doesn't mean you have to have cheap things, you know, you can right. have really nice stuff. So like I found this certain pair of cargo pants that I really like, and they're like 70 bucks a pair, which is like a lot of money compared to you could get a similar, a cheap pair at Walmart for maybe 20, but I only have four pairs of pants. And so I bought four pairs of $70 cargo pants and I have like this uh, custom handmade spoon and fork set that I bought. So it's just, it's nice to have nice things and it kind of helps, you know, you don't feel like you're lacking and it actually, it feels kind of good to just kind of always have nice things and, and things that you enjoy using. So I think that's kind of a side people don't talk about is with minimalism, you know, you get to have really nice stuff and it still doesn't cost you a lot. Question from Diana. Do you also sell the items you no longer want or need, or do you just donate them? Yeah. So I think that's a great question. And that's something that I thought about. And I, I know a guy that lives in his van and he actually does sell things on eBay. So, you know, his space is very limited, but he has, you know, certain small items that he just kind of has an eye for what's hot. And so he'll just buy things, store them in his van. And then as they sell, he'll just drop them off at the post office. So I think, um, like for me, I do sell stuff I no longer need, 
um, I throw it on eBay. And then like I sold a car part that I have that I've been traveling around with for like six months and it was brand new. And I was like, you know what? I'm never going to need this. So I posted it on eBay and then it finally sold. And I just drove by a post office and dropped it off. So I yeah. do personally sell stuff. Um, and I think, you know, I think you could even use, like I have a note here, you could use the freebies section of Craigslist and probably find things that are free that someone's getting rid of and then turn around and, and, you know, sell them, you know, and I wouldn't feel bad about it because a lot of people give away stuff that they know it's valuable. They just don't have time to mess with it. You know, I've been right. in that situation where I'm so busy that a $50 item isn't worth my time to try to sell. And so right. I just give it away. And if someone else, you know, they have more time than they do money, then they can go ahead and cash in on that value. But for me, the value is not there. So I don't feel bad at all about picking up something for free and then reselling it. What do you think, Justin? Uh, yeah, I highly recommend trying to, you know, um, like I said earlier, how my perspective on money is that every dollar you spend is less freedom. So when you can get some freedom back by selling items that you don't use anymore, um, I definitely recommend it. Um, Obviously, I would suggest selling to friends and family members first at a discount uh, before anonymous people on the internet. But um, if you're going to get rid of something anyway and it has some value, absolutely try to sell it. Um, I haven't had much experience with like Craigslist or eBay, but I will say that I have used the marketplace before to sell items on Facebook and it's worked very well um, because people will contact you uh, you know, usually within 24 hours, or even I've sold on OfferUp before, um, an application for your phone, um, Android or iOS, <clears throat> and uh, they'll get to you pretty quickly with those. So I'm not gonna, I don't have room to wait like weeks or days, like uh, with an eBay auction or anything. So right, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I. Um, it all depends on on your, you know, what kind of space you have to work with. Absolutely. Um, let's hop over and see what's going on next. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about budget <laughs> and expenses. That photo is hilarious. I've never seen that one. And so I, I just threw up this photo for fun. That was my birthday uh, two years ago. And uh, I saved so much money that me and my friends went up into the mountains and bought a pinata and I beat the heck out of it. <laughs> From all the money I saved. Oh my God. What do you have against Disney? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a... I mean, they did it as a joke. It's like a mini mouse pinata. So, you know, they right. were uh, they were trying to to have a little fun with Nomad Brad, but I still I still swung a baseball bat at it. So um, let's talk a little bit about expenses. I think the awesome thing, my favorite part about van life is just telling people how little I spend a month in expenses. Right. And so I'm just going to go down the list really quick. This is what's true for me. And so just to give you an idea, you guys an idea of what you could expect to spend per month. And of course, everyone's going to have their own different, um, you know, expenses and, and what they spend money on. But so for me, uh, the first thing is car insurance. My box truck is registered as an RV. And so I have RV insurance through National General Insurance. And I just got my monthly bill two days ago. It's forty eight dollars and forty four cents. Now, what a bargain. Yeah, that is not full coverage. It's only liability. Uh, but it, for four years, I've been living in all different vehicles and I've only had liability and I've never wrecked a vehicle. And in my entire life of driving, I'm 36 now, I've only been in a car accident once. So I feel like for me, I'm just not that accident prone. Um, if you're somebody that gets in a lot of accidents, then you might want to consider full coverage. Or if you have a real expensive, fancy, like a sprinter or you know, you finance something, then you're, you're going to want full coverage. But if you're living on the cheap, it's possible to have very low car insurance. Um, the, probably the biggest uh, monthly expense I have is my cell phone and internet. So I have an iPhone and an iPad Pro on my AT&T plan. And those are both unlimited. And it costs me 120 bucks a month. But that does include the financing on the phone. So AT&T lets you finance the iPhone. It's no interest. They just break up the payments over like three years. So I, it's like, it cost me like 30 bucks a month or something. So that's a part of it. But so that's my cell phone bill. And then food for me, you know, it's actually kind of higher because I, again, I try to buy when I can, I try to buy organic produce. I try to buy natural meat. 
And, uh, and so for me, I spend about a hundred bucks a week on groceries, which comes out to about 400 a month. And then monthly subscriptions. I have a Photoshop account, zoom account, Spotify and iCloud. That's about it. I don't do any, I don't pay for any streaming, no Netflix, none of that stuff. And so I spend about 40 bucks a month on subscriptions. I get my haircut once a month. That's about 25 bucks. I figure that an average month gas is about $150 for me. That's, um, you know, excluding any large trips, you know, if I'm not traveling state to state, if I'm kind of in an area and just moving every few days and getting gas and going to the grocery store, it's about 150 bucks a month for gas. Um, if I'm traveling a long distance, then, you know, the sky's the limit, you know, it could be a thousand bucks a month. It just depends, but gas is a variable cost. But so if you go down the list, you know, for me, that's about 800 bucks a month you know, and that's, that's to survive. That's for food, water, you know, cause my water, electricity, my rent is free. I'm paying for food and internet and gas and car insurance. And that's about it. So, you know, that's a minimum and that's less than I think a lot of people spend on just an apartment, right? For a lot of people, 800 right. bucks, that's just your, your apartment. That doesn't get you your utilities. And then you got to do water, gas, garbage, internet, sewer, right. whatever else they're hitting you for. And then your car and your car insurance and your cell phone. So 800 bucks a month and you're living free and you get to, you know, travel where you want. You get to follow the good weather. I'm down in Arizona right now where it's sunny and it's like 75 degrees and there's palm trees out. I don't want to rub it in Justin's face too much. He's up in Washington, but um, you have the ability to move. But actually, Justin is in Washington for a very good reason. He's in Washington because he has a lot of books that he was gifted. And so he's up there making money. And I think, I think that's a great reason to stay where he's at. And the fact of the matter is because he lives in his car, he's able to live at the place where he's processing books. But if he had an apartment he was renting in Seattle, he'd have to drive what two hours each way to go process these books. And right. that's, that's just not realistic. So it's actually because of the lifestyle he's living that he's able to do this job and, and make some great money out of it. Yeah. Um, it's been a huge blessing. I was donated these books from a family friend and, uh, I, I figured out a system to buy and sell and trade on Amazon. Um, Amazon can hold on to all the inventory. So I don't have a lot of space in my BMW, but, um, if you choose the fulfilled by Amazon option, um, it's a plan you have to pay like 30 bucks a month, but you get a thousand dollars or a thousand books storage. So um, my friend's parents had a library. They were librarians and they had a library. And so they passed away, unfortunately, but left behind um, three buildings full of books, <clears throat> top to bottom. And so um, that's what I've been working on. I just uh, sell them on Amazon and uh, turn around and make a profit. And so these last few months, um, the ball's really gotten rolling. I've made software to increase the productivity and um, you know the checks are starting to come in and um, they're above my cost of living by about twice as much now. Um, I will say <clears throat> a lot, my cost of living is much lower than $800 a month. Um, some of the stuff I'm not gonna uh, scratch the surface of uh, just for, I don't wanna self-incriminate. But I will say my cell phone book, uh, my cell phone bill is um, about 80 bucks a month, uh, 75, I think. My food is, um, I don't know, pretty cheap. It's probably like 50 or 60. I don't usually eat organic. Um, if I do, I usually ring it up as uh, non-organic. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> subscriptions, I don't subscribe to anything. Um, I'd highly recommend looking up how to torrent um, haircuts. I do my own haircuts. I don't pay anything for gasoline. Um, if I do, it's usually five bucks, uh, just to top myself off over a pass or something, but, um, living in an electric vehicle has its perks. Um, I don't pay anything for a hundred miles, so I can go up to hundred miles for free. Um, after that, I have to run off gasoline. So my cost of living is probably closer to 500. I'd say, um, if I had a ballpark, but, um, you know, my paychecks coming in now are uh, about 750 every two weeks. So 
and that that number is going to be keep going up as my software improves and as I put more effort into it. I don't really put much effort into selling books right now, but if I took it as a full time job, I could probably make like three, four times more money. But I probably work like three, uh, probably, like realistically, I probably work like eight hours a week. <laughs> That's pretty good, man. I mean, working eight hours a week and having such low expenses, such low overhead, and then having so much extra money to play with. I mean, right. that's a really stress-free lifestyle. I mean, it, it gives you a lot of right. room to just do what you want and not, you know, not have to go work if you don't want to. Well, yeah. And for example, right now I'm streaming from my best friend's house. So today uh, we just were, uh, we're working outside. We're gardening. Um, I like I say, said this in another podcast where my highest priority in life is to visit as many friends and family as possible and help them out as much as I can, because most of my burdens are um, very small and I've taken care of them at this point because I have the extra free time to work on the, the nuance problems in my life. I've worked most of them out. And so now I can start helping my immediate family and my immediate friends. And so that's where I'm doing where I'm today. And so um, at my best friend's house, we just got done gardening for a couple hours. And um, it's one of the best feelings in the world is like, you know, they really appreciate it. And it just helps build your friendship and um, in your bond even even more. So big perk of uh, having more freedom than a CEO. I love it, man. I absolutely love it. I uh, totally agree with you. I see we have a question from Diana. Um, she's asking if we buy food uh, for a week at a time, or if we buy bulk for every two weeks. And so for me, what I do is I, I break my food into two categories. Basically I have my perishables and my non-perishables. So I try to keep my van stocked with non-perishables, which would be rice, quinoa, oatmeal, um, pasta, beans, all those types of items, I carry as much as I can. So I'll have a month's worth of that stuff on hand. And I think it's good to do that also just for an emergency situation. You know, if something happens and, you know, you can't get to a store or whatever, it's nice to know that you have food that can last you until, you know, you get into a better situation. So I always recommend people uh, carry more food than they, than they need with them. So my perishables, I always, non-perishables, I always have a large supply of, but then I do typically go grocery shopping once a week. Um, yeah. That's the most I would go is once a week. And that's going to be like fruits and vegetables, you know, pretty much any kind of fruits and vegetables a, a week is about the shelf life, apples, oranges, any kind of lettuce or green items. Um, some stuff you can stretch out like a week and a half, but then you get into the issue of you have to have a lot of space you know, to hold all this stuff. So um, if you can, I think shopping once a week is pretty good. And, um, and how yep. about you, Justin? What do you do for your food? Uh, it's funny that there's eggs in that photo because I eat a lot of eggs. I think they're a great source of protein. They're yep. super cheap and they can last a really long time in my fridge. So I usually buy uh, five dozen eggs at a time. Um, and I have a refrigerator. It's four cubic feet. It takes up probably about a quarter of the space of my vehicle. Um, but it's, uh, definitely worth the payoff. I, like I said, I, I consider food and nutrition, a high part priority in my lifestyle. So, um, I really, I needed to upgrade from that mini fridge that was in the previous photo with the blender, but <clears throat> I buy about a, a week's worth of food at a time, five dozen eggs. I don't go through five dozen eggs in a week, but, um, five usually what I'll do. Eggs? <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, yeah, they're okay. great, man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, I try to meal prep as much as I can. So, uh, you know, I have the Mason jars. They're great because it's made out of glass. It's not plastic. You're not, uh, leaching, um, microplastics into your diet and they're super cheap. You can buy like 12 Mason jars for 12 bucks. So that's like $1 a jar. And that, you know, that's better than anything that you're going to get a higher quality and it's sealable than anything you can get at the dollar store. So I highly recommend looking into Mason jars. Um, they're a really good size too. I can actually fit my hand in them to clean them out really well. Um, and then, uh, like that blending tool we we're talking about earlier works great in them. So yeah, look yeah, at the immersion mason jars. blender goes right into the, goes right into the Mason jar. And you can see in this lower photo here, Justin's making some hummus. And so mm -hmm. I make my hummus the same way. I just put all the ingredients in the Mason jar and then you just stick the blender down in and turn it on. And so you just blend 
the hummus right in the jar and then you're done. You put the lid on and it's good to go. Um, and let me bring in really quick. We have a question. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of sneaking over and watching the YouTube chat a little bit. And uh, my buddy, Kurt, how you doing, Kurt, uh, from Oregon? He says, what are your thoughts on the food saver vacuum sealed meals? Would this be worth having knowing it would take more space? And I think that's a great question because I know with the food saver, you can get an attachment where you can seal jars. So, you know, you can use the plastic bags for like sealing meats and cheeses. And so I do think that would be a valid component to have because, um, you know, because you can extend the life of your items and then you could shop in bulk. Like you can get that huge loaf of cheese at Costco, right? And then you can like vacuum it down. And I know it doesn't use much energy because it only has, uh, it's basically just an air pump, you know, that's creating this vacuum. So it, it shouldn't be a large energy draw. Um, so I think the food saver would be nice. And then also the fact that you can seal mason jars with it. So you could put any kind of dry goods, even like cereal, if you wanted, you could put it in mason jars and then seal all the air out of it. So I personally don't have a food saver, but I think it's a great option. Yeah, I would say that uh, for me, it kind of goes back to your philosophies, right? And so for me, I try to cut out as many expenses as I can. And the food savers, they're pri uh, they were they're not like a subscription base, but you know, they have a limited, a finite amount. And so you're going to run out and you're going to have to go buy more. And so I try to cut anything that, you know, is like a subscription base out of my lifestyle. So uh, for example, I, uh, when I shave, um, I have my own like old school razor that uh, they used to use in the old barber shops. And um, it's, not, you know, I, they, they trap you into like these disposable razors and everything. Um, like hyper consumerism and right. um, you need to try to escape that as much as you can um, get your freedom back. So um, personally, I find like the Mason jars there, like I said, I, I go shopping every week and I meal prep once a week. And so um, there's really no need for a uh, crazy long-term storage. I'm not storing anything for like three months um, for a season or anything like that. Um, right. I'm cooking for one week at a time. So I, I don't use them personally. I can see the appeal but um, that's what the fridge is for, for a little extra extension of um, preserve preservation. Yeah, I wanted to show you guys really quick. So here's your wide mouth mason jar, um, wide mouth mason. And then here, this is my blender, right? This is the motor. And then this is the wand. It's got the blade on it. So it breaks down into two pieces and then it clicks together like this. And then when you push the button, the little blade spins. And so you put all your ingredients, whatever you're making, salad dressing, uh, hummus, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to do, right? You can do deviled eggs. You can whip up the eggs in this, but you literally just put it inside, turn it on, and then you rinse off the blender. And then this is all you have to clean. So you don't have to wash out a huge blender pitcher, the glass, all that. You just clean the wand and you're done. And then it comes apart. And this one also has a whisk attachment. It looks just like this, but it's a whisk. And so you can use it to like, to beat stuff up too. So uh, immersion blender, I got this from Target. It was like 20 bucks. Definitely, I think it's a good tool to have on hand. Um, so I appreciate the questions. Um, we have, we're getting run into the end of time here. Uh, we just hit four o'clock, but I have, Let's see, Elizabeth in the chat just has a quick question. Where do you, where do you go to the bathroom? Let's see. That's a great question. I think, yeah, yeah, I think she's asking like, you know, where do you go to the bathroom at night, right? Because during the day, yep. um, it's easy to find bathrooms at the park, you know, in the grocery store, that type of thing. And so both me and Justin, we don't have bathrooms. Um, I, I have an emergency toilet. It just uses bags. And so, you know, that's an absolute emergency um, that I'll, I'll have to set that up. But usually, you know, I've, I'm just used to my body enough now that I know if I go to the bathroom right before bed, um, that I'll be okay until the morning. I do. Don't be experimenting a, with some yeah. uh, crazy sushi. <laughs> yeah, something. yeah, yeah. You don't want to experiment with some crazy sushi. I do have a, a jar that I use for urine, right? So, you know, urine if you have to go overnight or something that can go into a jar and then that can be tossed out. But, um, number two is, you know, you definitely, 
you know, it's, you always hope you don't have to do that overnight. So that's, that's my situation, emergency bag, but usually I, I work it out that I don't have to. And then oftentimes I'll try to park in a place where um, I know there'll be a bathroom available when I first get up. So, you know, whether that be a park or a, a store parking lot that opens early, um, you know, then you can kind of get up and then the first thing you can do is go use the bathroom or you can get up and wherever you're parked at, you can just drive right to a gas station and then use a gas station bathroom. So that's kind of what I do if I have to go to the bathroom. What about you, Justin? Yeah, so there's two main options that I, I are my go-to. So the first one is I know where pretty much all the local porta potties are in my city because um, I don't like wearing masks and there's mask mandates everywhere in my city. So um, I always know where the the uh, porta potties are and a good place to look is construction sites um, because nobody's going to be at the construction sites at night and um, they're always pretty much unlocked that nobody locks them here in um, Seattle. Uh, the other option is I have a changing room tent. Um, it just pops out, it folds, it takes up pretty much no space. And um, if I really have to go in the middle of the night, I've got a bucket and a trash bag and uh, I pop out the um, portable uh, changing room tent. Um, it takes no time to set up and, um, you know, do your business. So. Yep. I agree. That's a great solution. Um, the pop-up tent is pretty nice. Um, if, again, if you need to, right. If you need to, it's there. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, it's pretty much no different than going in a porta potty when you think about it. So actually, I think it's better than going in a porta potty because usually there's no odor <laughs> when you're, you yeah, know, when right. you're setting up your pop-up tent, you're starting from fresh. Right. So yeah. it's, I, I would prefer it. Um, so did you have any, any last minute thoughts, Justin, where we just hit a little over an hour, um, based on this slide here, cooking your own meals, cooking with a group. I feel like we covered it pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I'll touch a little bit on cooking with a group. So in that photo, a lot of the supplies in that, uh, with the eggs was provided everybody, you know, somebody had a tomato, somebody had the tortillas, I had eggs, um, somebody had peppers. And so you can really save a lot of money and uh, have a really nice bonding experience with other van lifers. Um, when you just try to cook together, it's a really fun experience. I would highly recommend um, if you meet other people that are living in cars, um, go ahead and try to, uh, you know, make a dinner or make a breakfast together. It's a really fun bonding experience, save money um, and uh, get all the nutrients from the food into your body. So um, that's pretty much it from me. Uh, oh yeah. Don't get lazy. Don't buy fast food. It's very easy to do while you're in the van life. So make sure you're taking care of yourself, taking care of your body. Um, don't be having, um, you know, Taco Bell, McDonald's more than like once a week, realistically. Um, but sometimes that's easier said than done. And I understand. Yeah, I agree, man. Um, there's definitely a bit of a struggle sometimes to, um, there's definitely a bit of a struggle sometimes to like, you get those cravings still, you know, you're like, man, I want that cheeseburger, man, I want those donuts. So it's just, it's the same, you know, things you deal with in a regular sticks and bricks home. But I think the advantage is a lot of times when you're van life and, um, you know, you don't have the convenience, right? You don't have a pantry full of sugar. And then if you want to go get a cheeseburger, I mean, you really got to drive sometimes. So, uh, you know, it's, it can be, uh, it can be a little bit of a, of a helper to be so far away from the bad stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm looking into the questions here really quick. One lady, uh, Kathy actually says, where do people go if they're taking a trip? Had a lady that pulled me, pulled up at my campsite and had no idea. I lent her my bucket with a portable seat. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not sure about the question, but yeah, I get it. It's like, uh, <laughs> I definitely have the bucket I have the bag system I have is a five gallon bucket with uh, like a toilet type seat on top. And then you just slide a, a trash bag over it. So I think having the emergency seat with the toilet lid on top is, is a good choice. So 
What's awesome about the five five gallon buckets too is that you can get like vacuum attachments. Um, the, the five gallon buckets are very versatile. And yeah. so I have just like a vacuum lid that sits on top of it. So you can use the bucket as a storage container as well as a vacuum, as well as an emergency toilet. Um, you know, one thing when you're living in such small confinement space is um, your tools have to be very versatile. And so those buckets are critical to uh, the van life culture. So. Absolutely. I agree with that. Five gallon buckets and duct tape. It's sponsored by Home Depot. <laughs> so, all right, guys, I think that's about it. I think we covered it. I hope that you guys learned how to live with more freedom than a CEO on the budget of an assistant manager. And you can see, I mean, based on the budgets that we have, actually an assistant manager makes probably three or four times what, you know, what our monthly budget is. So, at least three or four times. So um, the reality is, you know, anybody can come out here and do it as long as they, you know, have a sense of adventure and they are adaptable and they are, you know, willing to do, to try some different things and make it happen. So um, I encourage you guys, if you're thinking about van life, you know, take the next steps, maybe, um, you know, maybe go try whatever vehicle you have, maybe just go try camping out for a while, see how you like it. Uh, if you got a car and you live in the city, you know, drive uh, 10 blocks from your house and maybe try staying overnight. Just see what the experience is like. I think you really don't know uh, how much you'll like it until you get out there. So go out and try it. And for those of you that are really thinking about it, I have a free course, a free workshop coming up next Wednesday. It's called Discovering Your Dream Home on Wheels. And I'm going to review, kind of take you guys through the steps of selecting the right vehicle for you, whether that be a minivan, a cargo van, a sprinter, a short bus, a box truck. I'm going to kind of review the different vehicles, talk about different styles of living, boondocking, stealth city camping. Um, and we're going to kind of just walk you through it and help you guys figure out, you know, what van life can really look like for you. So that's kind of your first step into really setting the wheels in motion and getting out on the road and starting See what you did there. journey. Yeah. Justin, any final thoughts for the people? No, this was a great episode. I had a lot of en uh, enjoyment making this one with you. So I'm glad um, people enjoyed it and I'm um, looking forward to the next one. All right, guys. I appreciate everybody for coming out. I'm Nomad Brad. This is Justin Golden Corral, and we will see you guys next time out on the road. Take care.